Neighborhood Health Watch is sponsored by the doctors of HCA Virginia Health System. In the Neighborhood Health Watch this afternoon, we're talking about cervical spine surgery. When do you know it's time to take that step? And joining me live is Dr. Katrina Murphy with Henrico Doctors Hospital. Thanks so much for stopping in this afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. When you talk about cervical spine surgery, people may not know exactly what that is. So let's start off by talking about who is a good candidate for this particular surgery. That's a great question. Many people have neck pain, but when does it become surgical? Very often neck pain alone uh, can be treated with physical therapy, sometimes with medications, sometimes even with injections. But sometimes if you've got nerve involvement, say if you're getting weak in an arm or having difficulty walking, that's a time when we need to start thinking about surgery because we don't want that to become a permanent condition. And so when you're talking about the surgery, how invasive is it? I understand there's been some significant, you know, improvements in the surgery over time. Correct. So, um, Pretty much in the last several years, we've become very good at doing minimally invasive surgery. And so we're able to decompress nerves, take care of compression, even at the spinal cord through uh, incisions that are about a centimeter or so. I mean, um, excuse me, um, an inch to several centimeters uh, in size. And so we're very good at doing that. We have a number of uh, techniques we do that with. We use the operating microscope in the operating room so we can use small incisions to really decompress nerves and the spinal cord. Now, do you find that there's any particular segment of the population that I say is more susceptible to this type of procedure or that would probably need it more? Right, so there are, we see, we do see it in cases of trauma, say with motor vehicle accidents, mm -hmm. and then we see it as people age, we have degenerative disease, mm -hmm. and occasionally degenerative disease will cause compression of the nerves or the spinal cord. And in those instances, sometimes surgery is the best option. When you talk about pain, how much of that will be impacted by a surgery like this? Is that one of the causal factors in terms of having the surgery? Yeah, that's a great question too. Yes, um, we can significantly reduce pain, particularly if it's radicular, meaning if it's going into the arms or into the legs with this surgery to really improve somebody's quality of life. And when you talk about the cervical spine surgery, it's right at the base of the neck, is that? or? So it's at where whatever level we find that the nerves are being compressed. So sometimes it's at the top of the neck, sometimes it's at the lower base of the neck. We're fortunate that we have advances in imaging such as high magnet MRIs that are able to show us where exactly the compression is and that's how we can focus our attention when we're doing our surgeries. Now, how long would someone actually have to recover from a surgery like this? Right. Are you talking about a matter of days, weeks, or what? That's a great question, too. Um, very often, we send people home the very same day. Hmm. Sometimes they just spend one night. Uh, usually, I ask people to reduce their activities for about six weeks, but many of my patients who don't do manual labor can go back to work in a couple weeks. Good to know. Dr. Katrina Murphy,